Hi, good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa lahat ng nanonood. Sana naririnig ko. <laughs> Ayan, so good afternoon and welcome to our online discussion called the Free Speech in Unfree Times where we discuss freedom of expression and questionable arrests. So this online discussion is organized by the Foundation for Media Alternatives. May, may problem sa audio, but I hope you can hear me clearly. Clear me. Okay, clear naman. So yun, this um discussion is brought to you by the Foundation for Media Alternatives, which is a non-profit, non-government organization in the Philippines seeking to democratize information and communication systems for citizens and communities. So this is actually the first discussion, online discussion organized by FMA but we're planning to we're planning more sessions like this in the future so kung gusto niyo po siguro ma-advise um, on future sessions or future discussions um, you can like the Facebook page of FMA uh, yeah. so by the way um I'm Jess Passis. I'm a program officer for FMA and I will be serving as the moderator for our discussion this afternoon. And siguro bago tayo magsimula, just a few guidelines or rules for our viewers. Um, so we're streaming on FB. Hello po sa mga nagsistream dyan. You can see sa comment box. You can actually write a comment there, post your questions, comment, um, additional analysis that you want us to see, and then wait for the mid moderator to read them. The Just a note that our speakers actually cannot see the questions in real time because we advise them not to watch sa Facebook so that it doesn't mess with the live stream. But um, our moderators backstage will choose the questions and comments that we will flash on screen later. And then next rule or guideline is to simply be respectful. Any comment that violates this rule will be deleted and will not be read in the live stream. And then lastly, if your question or comment was not read by the end of the session, siguro dahil nasagot na siya before, or we do not have enough time to answer them, you may contact FMA through our Facebook account. And I think our resource speakers will also give out or share their contact information later. And Sige, so, Sige, just to introduce also our discussions for this afternoon, we actually invited three resource persons to join us today. Our first resource person is attorney Vincent Isles. Oh, wave na lang, sir. Just read my hands. Nakamute po muna sila. Sa ngayon. Person is attorney Vincent Isles. He's a private practitioner based in Cebu City. He handles human rights cases pro bono and was primarily a legal and advocacy officer of the Children's Legal Bureau, Incorporated, a non-governmental organization working with abused children. In 2018, he became the founding president of the Cebu Action Group, Incorporated, another NGO that envisions an engaged Cebuano citizenry who subscribes to the ideals of democracy and the rule of law. 
Attorney Isles is also a member of the Free Legal Assistance Group or FLAG Cebu Chapter. Yeah, welcome po, Attorney. Our second resource person is Ms. Ronaline Olea. Hello po. Ms. Len, who is the managing editor of Bulatlat.com, the longest running online media outfit in the country. She is a former director of the National Union of Journalists of the Philippines, or NUJP. She finished her master's in journalism at the Ateneo Center for Journalism with the Conrad Adenauer Fellowship. She also served as national president of the College Editors Guild of the Philippines, or CEGP. Back in college, she was editor-in-chief of the Lyceum Independent Sentinel, student publication of the Lyceum of the Philippines in Manila. Welcome, Ms. Len. Our third guest is Kay Sullivan, Hi, Kay. who is part of the Education Department of Dakila. She also leads Digibac, which is the Digital activities, Activism Program for Youth Leaders and Human Rights Defenders. She's also the Philippine Program Manager of Love Frankie, a social change creative agency where she spearheads YouTube Creators for Change, an initiative engaging influencers to develop relevant content. On the side, she also works of front learners, an e-learning company aimed to democratize education by providing access to K-12 learning materials. And so welcome po to all our guests. So before we start the discussion, maybe we should just also give a background of why we're here, why we decided to convene this session, and what will we be talking about. So lately, there were news about the arrests, or in some instances, even warrantless arrests of individuals who posted critical comments against public officials. A teacher was visited and invited for questioning by the police for a post that encouraged people to troop to the gymnasium General Santos City to, to receive relief goods. A writer in Artibu was arrested by law enforcers for a post on Facebook saying that C. Patera has become the epicenter of the pandemic. pandemic sorry. A teacher was invited for questioning, entertained for a Twitter post offering a reward of 50 million pesos to whoever can kill Duterte. Satire, parody, and humor are just some of the forms of free speech and expression. But the recent arrests we mentioned earlier demonstrate that many law enforcers still consider many types of speech as libelous and therefore illegal. And so these arrests have created a lot of confusion among ordinary citizens like us, giving rise to questions such as what can and cannot be considered libelous under the law, what are the bounds of free speech, and what can ordinary people like us do to protect it. So first, I think um, we will allow our speakers to talk about their own views and opinions on the right to free expression in the time of COVID-19, as well as the government's, government's responses to free speech, including um, the Section 6F of the Bayanihan Act um, that penalizes the sharing of false information, as well as the arrests that we already mentioned earlier. Siguray, we can start with Attorney Isles. Sir? Um, 
good afternoon to everyone who's viewing us. These uh, times of the pandemic is not an excuse for the government to uh, derogate and uh, that could uh, this time. But um, I think um, what is important is that we should always go back to the constitutional right granted to all Filipinos that we have the freedom to express what we um, we have in mind and what is happening right now um, even from the president down to the uh, local chief executives including certain barangay captains they're using section um, 6f of the bayanihan act to curtail the freedom of speech of uh, people of uh, persons and that is uh, something that uh, we should not allow and uh, as a uh, former associate justice uh, Antonio Carpio has said, we, it's, not, it's not an excuse that there is an emergency and therefore um, we have lost this right. There is still the right of the people to say what they want to say and this should be respected by our government agents, including those who are elected to their post. Okay, thank you, Attorney Isles. Len? Yes, I fully agree with what Attorney Isles has said. What we're witnessing right now is a crackdown on dissent in the midst of a pandemic. As one colleague correctly put it, lockdown has been transformed into a crackdown. And we are being punished for demanding what this administration should be doing in the first place. If we look at the instances of arrest of netizens, most of them merely express their frustration at how this government is handling the COVID-19 response. And sad to say, as many have pointed out, it is slow, inefficient, and unscientific. And as Attorney Isles has said, the newly enacted law, the Bayanihan to Heal as one act, legitimizes suppression of dissent via the provision on fake news. As advocates have already said, the said provision could potentially be used. Actually, it's being used right now to silence critics of the administration. The more dangerous questions are who determines fake news. And we all know that many of the disinformation and lies are coming from government agencies themselves, such as the PCOO, Philippine News Agency, and the National Task Force uh, against the communist armed conflict. So they are punishing citizens and journalists for telling the truth. And we should not allow this to continue. Thank you, Ms. Len. Okay. So, um, the COVID pandemic is really a dark time for us. And on media, it's not in ang ating mga journalists, ang activists, it's not in the ilaw, and even um, a lay person, a common person, posting his or her sentiments on social media is also a form of reportage. It's also a form of freedom of expression and freedom is a basic right for everyone. This government really to wag tayong mag ano mag iyan ang priorities. Let's prioritize um the human rights of people. Hindi yung puro arrests. Um, hindi yung tumatarget tayo ng mga pamamayan who voice out lang ng mga opinion. The crisis empowers each and every one of us to uphold our own human rights and for the government to uphold it as well. Na dapat, even in this um, dark times, we we uphold a participative approach on governance and hold of accountable their lack of action. And 
sana hindi maging patuloy ang pag-attack sa ating mga mamamayan, sa ating mga artista, aktivista at uh, mga kasama sa media sa gitna ng isang krisis kung saan sila ang ating susi sa impormasyon. Okay, thank you, Kay. Hello. Can you hear me? Sorry, parang nawawala yung audio. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. Wala kasi sa akin. So, sige. Salamat po dun sa paunang mga opinion. Uh, but uh, I'm also wondering what you think about the justification na palagi nilang ginagamit na itong mga um, arrests na ito, itong mga restrictions um, sa free speech, sa expression ng, um, ng mga tao is necessary for um, the upholding of public order. So, Ano ba sa tingin niyo yung tamang <clears throat> balance that we need to strike between free expression and public order? Or siguro mas basic question is, do we even need to strike that balance? Like, is there even uh, a need to put those two things, um, to weigh those two things against each other? Anyone can answer po. Yun po ang gusto mag unmute na lang po siguro ang nagsasalita. Anyone? Alright, sige, I'll start na din. So, the recent arrest tackles on in this protected under speech and it is also a form of artistic or creative expression so kaya nga po tayo may um, mga batas na basic pinoprotektahan po niya yung karapatan natin na magsalita ang, ang fair dito is um, uh, that's the main factor that nagko-continue ito is because tinatarget yung mga, kap, mga maliliit na mamamayan or mga nasa um, artist industry and more so people take it too literal which is protected again i think si attorney could further discuss on ano nga ba yung rights and um na protected ng ating free speech Well, um, our constitution is very clear. We have the, the freedom to express what's in our mind. Uh, of course, this is not absolute. Wala namang nagsasabi na absolute ito. But uh, what I am um, afraid and what, what is really happening right now is that they are moving the boundaries uh, between what is allowed speech and what is not allowed speech by their own um, yung sarili nila, arbitrary nila na napagsasabi na ito, hindi ito dapat, hindi, hindi, hindi ito um, prohibited ito, hindi ito maari. So, ang, ang ano naman kasi, you look at government, uh, it has always been a balance between our rights as citizens and as our responsibility as well as part of, of the entire uh, structure. However, um, we have very clear standards on that as um, burnt out in jurisprudence and in our laws kung kailan kay, pwede nating um, ipagkait sa isang tao ang gusto anumang gusto niyang uh, sabihin gusto niyang uh, anyone anything that he, he would like to talk about he could express that and our jurisprudence has always uh, viewed that the best way to counteract bad ideas is to give your own good idea in order to provide a marketplace of marketplace of ideas that has always been the ideal. The problem now is, even if the law, the Bayanihan Act, clearly stated that 
only those which are clearly fake news. And if you look at it, it's not just even fake news. You could you could post fake news, and yet there should be no criminal liability that attaches to you unless that fake news creates confusion, anarchy, chaos. That's that's the the intent there. There must be that intent. So, ang nangyayari ngayon, um, nagrereklamo tungkol sa social amelioration uh, grant. Um, ginagawa ng, ng mayor, ginagawa ng barangay captain, sinasabi, ipa-arrest yan kasi uh, that is a fake news. So, hindi naman, hindi naman ibig sabihin na binibigyan mo yung opinion mo, kahit, kahit anong mali pa yung opinion mo, karapatan mo yan eh. So, kung gusto nilang i-counter yan, their best way of countering supposed to be is not to order the arrest, but to give their explanation of how things really happen. Bakit Bakit itong si SAP Grantee na ito nabigyan? Bakit itong si Neighbor na ito hindi? So, yun yun supposed to be kung uh, inaral pa ng ating mga leaders kung ano yung nasa batas natin, kung anong sinasabi ng, ato, ng ating uh, uh, Supreme Court. But again, um, that's the ideal. What's happening is very far from ideal. Thank you po, Ms. Len. Sige po. Uh, I agree with Kay and Attorney Isnes, no? Free speech is a fundamental right at isa ito sa karapatan natin is enshrined in the Philippine Constitution. But under the current circumstances, tama yung tanong kanina ni Jess, Jessa, no? Na dapat bang pagbanggain natin? Actually, the right to free speech and expression should all the more be promoted and respected, especially because the temptation for abuse is very strong. No, nasa ilalim tayo ng uh, health emergency. So the temptation for abuse for authorities is very strong. Kaya dapat lalong protektahan ang kalayaan sa pamamahayag at iba pang karapatang pantao. Any restriction on the right to free speech is unacceptable at a time when the exercise of our right to information and our right to secret dress could mean life and death. For example, yung mga victims ng Typhoon Ambo last week, no, they were denied access to information because of the shutdown of ABS-CBN na yun lang yung accessible na free channel and radio sa kanila. Pero dahil sa pandemic na ito, ginagamit na justification to muzzle free press at saka yung karapatan ng karaniwang mamamayan ng magsalita. At uh, susu susugan ko din yung sinabi ni Kay na it seems that authorities o yung mga nasa poder could not understand what satire and hyperbole means. No? Gaya ng sinabi ni Attorney Isles, um, nagkukos ba to ng real danger itong um, simpleng social media post ng karaniwang mamamayan? Bakit kailangan humantong ito sa aresto at iba't ibang mga kaso? And what is even more enraging is the double standards or what others uh, would say as selective justice. Not only in terms of free speech, in the exercise of free speech and expression, but uh, also in the implementation of the quarantine protocol. Kaya ano, kailangan mas maging vigilant tayo. Okay, salamat po, Ms. Len. I think Attorney Isles has follow-up. Um, yun, yun, um, I, I would just like to give a follow-up yung sinasabi ni, ni uh, Ms. Len. No? Um, indeed, uh, sa panahon ngayon, mas dapat pa nga nabigyan natin ng access yung mga kababayan natin na mag, maka, makapagsabi ng mga hinanaing nila and what they want to express to the government. Instead, what we are doing, and um, hindi, naman, hindi naman siguro sa ano niyan, uh, what's happening is that social media, specifically Facebook, had been very uh, useful for, for our citizenry now to express what they, they feel. Ang, ang dapat sana nangyari is ginagamit ito ng government, kung proactive lang sana yung nasa administration natin, ginagamit yung um, nangyayari na feedback from, from the people to inform their decisions kung anong dapat sanang gawin. But instead, ang nangyayari is yung mga 
tinitingnan nila na nagiging kritiko sa kanila, dinadakip at uh, sinasampahan ng kaso. Yun, yun na po. Okay, salamat po, attorney and um, all our speakers. So, I think from your answers, malinaw po na yung pagtapak sa free speech or free expression, hindi lang siya isang issue, pero nakaka-apekto rin siya pati sa ibang karapatan ng mga mamabayan, like yung the right to information, as well, especially in these times na crucial ang makatanggap ng tama, tamang informasyon. And also, the right um, to free press. Uh, meron sinabi kanina si Attorney Isles na actually malinaw sa batas at sa jurisprudence kung alin lang ang mga exceptions to freedom of expression. So siguro kung pwede lang po um, i-elaborate, Attorney, kung alin po ba, sa anong mga kaso po ba hindi um, papasok yung free speech or free expression. Well, yung yung basic example ng jurisprudence natin yo, no, um pag sinabi mong may um fire or may 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 apoy, um there's fire in 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 the crowded theater. The, uh, clearly that is not that is not allowed because you are putting everyone uh, uh, in danger so yun yung standard eh kung may uh, clear and present danger ba yung speech mo kung wala abay walang walang basis na yung government must exercise its police power in order to tell you to shut up in order to restrict your right to free speech Kung tama man o mali man yung sinasabi mo, kung ayaw man nila sa sinasabi mo, the, the, the only way that they could address you is not to arrest you, but to also give their opinion against your opinion or to, to present their, their version of the story, so to speak. Yun yung sana yung batas, eh. yun yung sana yung, yung sinusunod natin na standard. Uh, unfortunately, again, ang nangyayari is... Um, Hindi sinusunod yung standard na tingnan natin kung ito bang sinasabi ng taong to. Is this really causing danger? At kung hindi naman danger yung 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 nangyayari, ay eh, wag na, wag wag mo nang patulan, mas marami pang kailangan gawin yung NBI, yung C CIDG. O tingnan mo yung 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 taong nagsabi na uh, magbibigay siya ng 50 yung teacher na nagsabi na magbibigay siya ng 50 million para sa makapatay kay uh, President Duterte. I mean, come on, nobody in his right mind would really think that he was being serious about that. Because why would you give 50, 50 million pesos uh, to to uh, order or to uh, murder the president? The same thing yung sinasabi ng client namin dito sa Cebu, uh, si Ms. Maria Victoria Beltran, na sinabi na yan na um, yung... Cebu is now the epicenter of the uh, entire solar system. Sino mang may, 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 may simple na understanding na literature would understand that that was really meant as, as a witty um, sarcasm on what was happening. And unfortunately, there are just some people who could not uh, appreciate such kind of wit and they, they literally understood it um, to be that Indeed, it was the it, it is the the epicenter of um, the entire epidemic, and uh, what, what, the funny thing is that even the DOH is really saying yes, indeed, uh, Cebu City is becoming the epicenter because we have the most cases here now uh, versus uh, Metro Manila. So yun yun yung uh, siguro dapat nating na natin dapat yung standard ng mga uh, law enforcers natin, mga government. Uh, um, officers natin, especially elective officials na nagiging uh, union skin ngayon and I know and I understand uh, they, are, they are also on a lot of pressure right now because of what's happening and this is something that uh, nobody had prepared for but again, um, yung pressure sa atin um, hiningi natin sa taong bayan yan na tayo yung mag-lead 
siguro isipin natin kahit niyong presyo na yon may mga standards pa rin tayong sinusunod at may mga batas pa rin tayo na kailangan uh, sundin. Yan lang po. Okay. Salamat po, attorney. Um, I think um, maganda rin or interesting sa sinabi rin ni attorney. Lalo na dun sa kaso ni Ms. Beltran sa Cebu is the lack of si attorney is yung kawalan ng ability ng law enforcement officers and our public officials siguro to also recognize um, humor, sarcasm, satire as valid expressions um, and free. So, siguro tanong ko lang po either Kay or Kay Len sa experience niyo bilang journalists and um, activists kung ano po ba yung value ng mga bagay na to sa you or sarcasm and journalism. Sige, Ms. Len po siguro. Ah, sige, si Ms. Len muna. Sige, as I've said no earlier na satire and humor ay constitute a so dapat hindi siya parusahan. So, kung sa journalism yan, karaniwan nakikita natin to sa editorial cartoons, sa iba't ibang mga visuals, and may may mga columnist din who use humor and satire, no? Para dun sa uh, kanilang uh, discourse. Uh, for example, sa alter media, meron kaming section doon, yung serious na, na satirical na commentary dun sa mga present issues of the day. So, Uh, gaya ng sinabi ni Attorney Eastless, we should not be punished for expressing our opinion. In fact, dapat nga, uh, uh, the government should take this as ano, feedback mechanism para i-improve nila yung kanilang response. Ang problema natin, we are being treated as enemies for merely voicing out our uh, legitimate demands. No? At ito yung nakakalungkot ngayon because they want... Uh, They want to institute a uh, chilling effect. They want to institute fear among the netizens. And uh, kung nagagawa nila ito sa journalist, what more dun sa mga ordinaryong mamamayan? Uh, at hindi biro yung uh, panay-panay na post nila and threats na wag magbibiro, wag magbibitaw ng threats against the president because that could end up... Uh, you can end up in jail no, for just uh, stating your opinion. Okay. Hello, yes. Uh, jumping on Ms. Len's um, statement, no, I think yung actions ngayon ng government is uh, it's like a form of defense mechanism. They can answer directly kung ano man yung kinong mga ng mga sa social media. And political satire in history is a very disruptive form of expression. And it could be used in a good way. And for example, in US and Russia, kasamum ng mamamayan ng politika, ang mga ganitong forms of expression ay protektado pa rin. So parang ang nangyayari kasi ngayon, parang ang analogy ko dyan, parang tanimbala, We are unarmed. We just voice out our opinions. Tapos tinatayman tayo ng bala us of um, anarchy, fear, or confusion when in fact we are not. I think, um, kagaya nung sinabi ko kanina, it's really the political will behind it na may tinatarget tayo. And because marami sa ating um, mga nag-consume ng post does not or um, maybe it's the political agenda behind it, the targeting of activists. Uh, ang basic form ng satire na nakikita natin ngayon na hindi masyadong na, na I guess, it was the release, di ba? It's a form of political, as Len said, is also a form of satire. I think yung ngayon lang talaga na mas nag-focus ang... LGUs or the national government 
na may double standard sila kung sino lang yung paparusahan sa spread ng satirical posts versus mga you can already see that this is um, political back na merong strategy behind it kung bakit they want to instill fear instead of motivation in for your Filipino people amid uh, a pandemic which is already already feel fear because political behind the targeting of this and yung mga um part or sectors ng government na supposedly nagpo-protect ng rights natin ay tinatarget ang isang mamamayan natin harmless posts Okay, thank you, Kay. Um, before we move on to our our next question, siguro paalala lang din po ulit sa mga nanonood sa Facebook. I think meron tayong 20, 18 um, viewers on Facebook right now. Kung meron po kayong mga tanong or comments, um, pwede po kayong mag-type sa comment box para rin po ma-relay natin sa ating mga speakers and they will try to answer it. So, post lang po kayo we, We're also um, flashing some of the questions and comments on screen. Ayan. Ayan. So, uh, sa tingin ko po maganda actually yung point din na sinabi kanina ni, ni on how it's interesting that the government is treating these people that are speaking out um, as their enemies instead of viewing it as a feedback feedback mechanism. Kasi valid naman talaga yung ibang mga kritisismo tsaka yun talaga ang experiences ng mga mamamayan. And I think this also brings us back to the point earlier that yung mga arrests na to, most of these cases, lalo na yung mga cases ng cyber libel, actually hindi naman siya cases um, against ordinary citizens yung mga um, speech na nagiging basya ng mga kaso, usually, kritisismo siya against a public official. So, um, may tanong lang siguro kay Attorney Isles din also. Um, is there a difference in the standard kung ano ang libelous, considered as libelous speech um, in cases where the, the subject of the speech is um, a public versus it's an ordinary speech. Yes, um, kasi kung, kung public uh, figure ka, um, the, the rule is public figure, not necessarily public official. Kung uh, public figure ka, which uh, we could define as uh, someone whose uh, life is basically uh, open to, to, the, to the public, uh, unlike uh, private persons na hindi naman inaalam ng karamihan yung anong nangyayari sa buhay niya. Um, there, there is that uh, defense na tinatawag na truth, uh, truth as defense. Kasi kung sa um, public figure, pag sinabi mo na corrupt ka, uh, nagdan, nagnanakaw ka sa, sa government uh, treasury, um, pag sinabi sa iyo na okay, sige, sampa, sampahan kita ng libel, if you could actually show to the court that indeed um, he, he, he malverse money from the treasury, um, you will be you will be um, you you would be the, the case against you will be dismissed. You will be acquitted. Wala yan sa, sa, sa private person kasi ang 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 tingin sa uh, batas sa private person is wala naman tayong pakialam kung anong ginagawa nila sa sa, sa buhay nila. So. In other words, yung yung ano natin sa sa uh, public figures mas mas higher ang standard para makapagsabi sila na uh, libelous itong itong sinasabi ng uh, ng uh, respondent ng accused na ito. Yun yung yun yun ang, ang 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 nangyayari. However, if you really look at it, um, I think uh, all of us here sa uh, panel uh, would agree na yung libel as a criminal action um, is uh, 
already supposed to be removed from our statute books. If you if you look at it um, in terms of how it was used, it was actually originally used by the Americans to put an end or to curtail the freedom of speech of Filipinos during the American occupation of our country. Uh, si, uh, may, 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 may isang tao na iyan yung ginagamit palagi and kasi, kaya naging criminal criminal uh, act yan or nagiging criminal violation. Um, in an ideal world, and many, many um, jurisdictions now are already removing libel um, from their statute books as a criminal act. Pwede naman kasi may, may, may civil libel na I, I'm, I'm a person and uh, you defame me, um, I'll sue you, and of course you would not go to prison, but you will be asked by the court to pay damages to me because you destroyed my um, reputation. So yun yun, yun, yun sana yung, yung ideal uh, thing, and uh, maybe after the pandemic we can talk about those things, but uh, right now, uh, yun yung Nang, 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 yung, yung, yung focus natin yung uh, tungkol sa uh, libel as against private persons and against uh, um, pa, pa, uh, pa, public uh, private persons and public individuals. Now, sa ano naman, anong difference ng libelous speech and hate speech? Unfortunately, um, ako, uh, well, maybe some would say unfortunately because it's it's really uh, limitation on the freedom of speech but ako I agree with criminalization of certain forms of hate speech yung sinasabi mo because of certain uh, like gender or the sex or the uh, religious affiliation sinasabi mo yan na, na ikinagalit ng karamihan dahil lang sa sila ay Muslim o uh, sila ay uh, member ng isang isang grupo or sila ay mga babae o sila ay mga bakla that that hate speech should be criminalized. We have some um, ordinances, local ordinances, which uh, criminalize some forms of hate speech. Um, yung Public Spaces Act, may, may ano rin yun na, uh, uh, which could be considered a uh, hate speech. Yung sa hate speech, wala kang tinatarget na specific individual, but you are targeting a specific group. Kaya nagiging hate speech yan. However, if if um, if tina target mo is um, specific individual hate speech ya, tapos tina target mo rin for, to a specific individual, and that is also defamatory to that individual, it could actually be both libelous speech and hate speech. So ano ang sinasabi ko? Uh, I think we should move to a paradigm where uh, libel is decriminalized. I am I have no problem with libel remaining as a civil action but yung hate speech it should remain because certainly there are uh, good things and there are um, uh, there are reasons where uh, why we should keep and maintain in, in our statute books the criminalization of uh, this hate speech yan lang po Okay, salamat po, attorney. Uh, yes, Ms. Len. Sige po. Uh, I agree with attorney Isnes, no? Historically, libel is used as a weapon by politicians to silence journalists and other critics. Uh, as we can recall, former President Joseph Estrada filed 101 million libel case against Manila Times, no? for calling him uh, unwitting ninong of Dandin Kowangko. And then the husband of former okay. President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo also filed libel charges against 42 journalists for publishing articles that are critical of him. And under this administration, cyber libel is one of the legal uh, weapons being used against Rappler CEO Maria Ressa. So ang makikita natin talagang uh, ginagamit itong sandata para patahimikin ang mamamahayag. Uh, and in fact, uh, katulad ng sinabi ni Attorney Isles, we have also been calling for the decriminalization of libel because uh, sa Pilipinas, ang isa na lamang sa natitirang bansa kung saan uh, criminal offense pa rin ang libel. And this is inconsistent with the international 
Covenant on Civil and Political Rights na kung saan ang Pilipinas ay isa sa mga signatory. And in fact, sa isang landmark decision noong 2011 ng United Nations Human Rights Committee, hindi ko nababanggitin kung sino yung nag-file ng case na ito. No? A spokesperson na siya ngayon. <laughs> uh, pero doon sa landmark decision na ito, si Attorney Estes, kilala niya rin ito. Pero sa landmark decision na ito, ang sabi ng UNHRC, ang criminal sanction for libel sa Pilipinas ay excessive at um, violative of the Article 19, Paragraph 3 of the ICCTR. Uh, noon pa man, nirecommend na rin nila yung decriminalization of libel. But what happened? No? Instead of adhering to these recommendations, ang Pilipinas ay nagpasa ng cybercrime law in 2012, which imposes higher penalties for all crimes uh, defined and penalized by the revised penal code, including libel. At ito ay malaking dagok sa kalayaan sa pamamahaya dahil ang cyber libel na ito ay could lead up to I could lead to up to 12 years of imprisonment. No, ibig sabihin tatlong beses na mas mataas ang penalty compared to ordinary libel. So ang ang gusto lang nating puntuhin dito uh, hindi um hindi makatao, hindi makatarungan na criminal offense pa rin ang libel at hindi katanggap-tanggap na ngayon ginagamit yung cyber libel para takutin ang mga netizens. No? Ordinaryong mamamayan, magpo-post lang sa Twitter at saka sa Facebook ng kanilang opinion, kakasuhan mo ng cyber libel. In fact, kahit student journalist, no? na-document na, na, na natin yung editor-in-chief ng UE Dawn. At kahit yung today's Carolinian, tinatakot ng governor nila, attorney is this. No? Dahil lang sa kanilang mga stories at posts sa social media. So, uh, nakakalungkot ito, nakakagalit, at hindi natin dapat payagan na magpatuloy. Okay, so, sige, salamat po uh, Miss Len and attorney is this for um, that great insight on Maybe we should uh, review also the need to decriminalize libel. So, my question po tayo from our audience. Um, do you know the hope of any efforts right now to decriminalize libel in the Philippines? Um, kung sa bahagi ng journalist, yan, yan. the National Union of Journalists of the Philippines has been consistent, been consistent in, in calling for the decriminalization of libel. Especially after nga nung 2011 decision ng UNHRC. Pero, uh, um, unfortunately, hindi pa ito umuusad sa Kongreso. Kasi gaya nga nung sinabi natin, it is uh, being used by politicians as a weapon against journalists. So, why would they um, decriminalize it if Uh, they use it as a weapon no? against uh, journalists and citizens who are critical of the policies of the administration. Kaya ang maganda rito, kailangan uh, magkaroon talaga ng mas active campaign. We enjoin all uh, press freedom loving citizens na ipush itong decriminalization of libel. Okay. Attorney, you want to add something? So, parang wala yatang uh, nag-sponsor ngayon. Uh, I, can, I, 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 I could be corrected if um, uh, some other member would know otherwise. Uh, but again, yung tama yung sinasabi ni Ma'am Ronalyn, um, ang nangyayari is uh, wala silang incentive na i-decriminalize yung libel kasi nga uh, ginagamit, na, ginagamit yan as a weapon by our politicians. So, parang uh, kung gagawin nila yan, uh, they're, 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 they're working against their own uh, interest. So, I mean, most people will not do that, uh, especially our politicians. So, hopefully, we can have a better uh, drive at this and um, more efforts on, on, on having uh, this and sana may magiging champion doon sa uh, Kongreso in order to uh, have this uh, decriminalized and um, we move away from libel as a criminal act. Yun lang po. Okay. 
Okay, salamat po, attorney. I think we have a question of the live audience, but this is um already related to the question of warrantless arrests. So, baka pwede na rin po tayo siguro mag um shift to 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 that topic kasi um tulad na nga nasabi natin kanina, a lot of these cases um lalo na yung mga kaso ng cyber libel um yung iba sa kanila were arrested without warrant and uh, siguro para malito na lang din po attorney um yes, ano po ba, uh, what constitutes legal arrest and w- when can police officers legally make an arrest without a warrant okay so yung general rule natin no um that is based on our constitution ang sinasabi ng ating constitution is you can look you can only be arrested if there is a warrant of arrest issued by a judge kasi that's that's one step para malimit yung possible abuse by our law enforcers so kung ang general rule kung walang warrant of arrest from a competent judge you cannot be arrested of course may exception tayo now ito yung tinatawag na warrantless arrest under um Rule 115 of the Revised uh, Rules of Criminal Procedure sa ating Rules of Court. Now, tatlo lang yung sinasabi dyan. Na, number one, yung tinatawag na inflagrante o quote in the act sa mismo, sa harap mismo ng law enforcer o ni, ni citizen man, ginagawa yung krimen, abay naturalmente pwedeng dakpin ni police officer yung gumagawa ng krimen. Yun yung tinatawag na uh, yung yung tinatawag na inflagrante o uh, court in the act. Ikalawa yung hot pursuit. Yung hot pursuit naman, may personal knowledge si police na may nangyari na krimen. Paano magiging personal knowledge? May nagsabi sa kanya. Pinuntahan niya doon sa, sa, sa crime site, nakita niya doon, may dugo ang tao doon. Tapos, alam niya na yung taong tumatakbo, yun yung, yun yung tao na may kagagawan. Kasi sinabi nga ng mga nakakita. Kaya nga tinatawag yung hot pursuit kasi dapat pagka yari, pagka, pagka, uh, when, when the incident happened, when the crime allegedly occurred, right away, sinundan mo yung tao na responsable kaya nagiging hot pursuit. Yung pangatlo, yung, yung is, escape from, uh, escape from, from prison. Uh, parang hindi naman, hindi naman issue yan. Ang, ang nangyayari ngayon, yung in, in, in reference to warrantless arrest due to libel, ang sinasabi nila is continuing crime daw yung libel kasi nakapost pa doon yung sa, sa, sa um, website, sa Facebook, yung allegedly libelous act, libelous post. Now, ang sinasabi namin, naman namin dyan is parang wala naman silang capacity to determine na libelous yung post doon. Sino bang nagsabi na libelous yun? Yung, yung na, allegedly na libel? Of course, magsasabi yung na, na libel siya. Um, but is there an independent authority who had already found, there is already a finding that indeed this is libelous? So dapat, dapat siguro klaruhin yan and I would really, I would really recommend na uh, sa Congress magpasa sila ng batas na iklaro yan na hindi yan pwede yung arrest due to libel, warrantless arrest due to libel. Dapat yung, yung sinasabi nating warrantless arrest, yun lang yung nasa rules talaga na may nangyari na krimen. Yun naman kasi, ang kaibahan kasi sa, sa um, murder for example, eh, hindi mo naman maikaila na may namatay, may tao dyan na nakabulang ka, uh, duguan, um, basag yung mukha, uh, pinagbabaril. Pero yung sa libel, ano yan eh, it's a matter of, 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 of opinion kung libel yan o hindi. Of course, we have standards and sino nag interpret sa standards na yan? Yung mga huwes. Yung, yung, yung prosecutor for interest of probable cause. So, that is why uh, parang in, 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 in that sense, napaka, ano, napaka um, uh, uh, unclear ng rules natin. So, And again, an example yung nangyari kay Miss Beltran dito sa Cebu. Um, 
allegedly she violated Section 6F of um, the Bayanihan Act, Bayanihan to Hill Aswan Act. Now, ang sinasabi nila is dinakip nila kasi continuing crime. Ang hindi nila dil, ang, ang hindi nila na na, na, na na indicate doon is that na by the time na inaresto nila si Miss Biltran, the post was already taken down. Actually, it was already set on uh, a private uh, mode. So paano pa nagiging continuing crime kung wala na yung yung ebidensya na may 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 post pa? Diba kung kung ang reasoning nila na yung libel is continuing kasi nandoon pa yung post. So kung wala na yung post, hindi na continuing. But again, uh, these are things that are to be twist out in in a court of law. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because of our uh, justice system, uh, some people will have to stay in jail for uh, a couple of days while these things are are sorted out. So uh, sa ating mga uh, viewers, um kung Inaaresto kayo, maghanap kayo ng warrant of arrest and uh, kung wala, wala yang may pakita na warrant of arrest, of course, wag, wag naman kayong uh, makipag-away kasi uh, sila yung nasa kapangyarihan, sila yung may mga arma, sila yung may, may puwersa. Uh, but ang isang isasabihin ko talaga is uh, never, never tell them anything. Um, if there's one thing that any lawyer would tell you, it's if you are being arrested, Wag na wag kang magsabi ng kung anuman. The only thing you, you could tell the police officer is yung pangalan mo, yung address mo, nothing else. Not anything about the crime, not anything about the alleged uh, uh, crime that you've done. Um, kung kung uh, pinipilit ka na talag ka rin, um, well, sumama ka na lang kasi masasaktan ka lang. But the, the important thing is immediately you inform someone, preferably a lawyer or kahit kahit law student kasi may may kilalang lawyer yan um sabihin mo kung anong nangyayari sa iyo and you insist on your right may right to custodial investigation kapag dinakit ka you have the right to speak to a lawyer you have the right to speak to um a religious minister you have the right to speak to your immediate family member hindi pwede yang excommunicado yung uh, wala kang access to the outside world um supposed to be um you have the right you have all this right that to, to make sure na hindi ka maabuso while you are being arrested kasi kasi kahit ano pang gaano pa kalaki ang kasalanan mo sa batas you are still a human being in the eyes of the law and may mga uh, rights ka pa rin may mga karapatan ka pa rin na guaranteed not only by our laws but by our constitution so yung mga police na ayaw niyan sabi na yung human rights uh, Ano yan, um, um, against law enforcement yan, ay siguro they, they, should, they should start uh, looking for other jobs because that's the foundation of our society. Hindi naman gawa-gawa namin mga lawyers yan, hindi naman gawa-gawa yan ng mga aktivista yan, hindi naman gawa-gawa ng mga uh, activist journalists yung mga ganyan na, na rights. Yan ay nasa konstitusyon natin at uh, supposed to be susundin nila. And in fact, nandyan yan sa uh, man, uh, manual of police officers yung sinusunod su, su, sinusunod sana nila na rules how to arrest someone but of course hindi na sinas, hindi na nila yan sinusunod ngayon yun lang po may questions po tayo na pumasok pala sa live audience natin sa Facebook hindi ko alam po nababasa niyo attorney pero sabi niya madami ako na buang ang isang public nung ko po pag sinabi ba na buang isang buang ang isang public official libel, libelous na po ba iyon Well I cannot think of my, uh, top of my head no kung uh, top of my head kanang yung my jurisprudence ba na nagsabi na pag sinabi mong uh, buang uh, libelous na ang naisip ko is may 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 ruling na yung sinasabing uh, putang ina uh, hindi hindi yan libelous and following that jurisprudence kasi pag sinabi mong buang especially dito sa sa Cebu that's kind of more of an expression of uh, our disappointment with our anger hindi naman ang intent niyan is i defame na uh, baliw talaga yung tao na yan ang uh, pag sinabi mong buang dito sa Cebu ha, at least dito sa Cebu ang ang ibig sabihin niyan galit ka sa tao na yan 
and being galit, being angry at someone is not a crime. Ang ang dapat ipakita ng official na dinidefend talaga siya. But again, I think I think I can defend someone na sasabihin na uh, buang yung uh, isang public official and um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, ano, it's a, it's libelous. Um, parang hindi libelous eh. Pero, I mean, for, for our viewers, uh, wag nyo namang, uh, wag, wag nyo gawin na yun lang. Uh, pwede nyo sabihin na buang, but uh, lagyan nyo, nyo ng reasons kasi pag sinabi nyo lang na buang tong official na to, walang, walang, I mean, it's very weak. So, so sabihin mo, buang tong official na to, bakit? O, hindi, hindi, hindi uh, sinigurado na may mass testing sa lugar o hindi sinigurado na nasusunod yung batas. Eh ba, ano bang tawag natin sa taong hindi sinusunod yung batas? Eh buang yan. No? So, not just justify mo kung bakit tinatawag mong buang. But again, again uh, as of now, uh, I know it's like um, parang yung tinatawag natin chilling effect. Uh, natatakot tayo kahit nga kaming lawyers. Uh, Uh, nire-review namin bago kami pinupost yung, sina, yung sinusulat namin kasi baka may 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 ano doon na ma, ma misinterpret and of course you could always explain um, the the misinterpretation later on but the the question is uh, uh, what resources would you have to 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 uh, devote to that na mas marami ka pang kailangan gawin mas marami ka pang kailangan tulungan Now, uh, isigwi natin to yung sa, sa kaso ni Ronil Mas, si Teacher Mas. Yun yung sinasabi ko eh. Kung hindi lang sana siya nagsabi na nagpost siya yung nagpost noon, kung wala siyang sinabi sa polis, I would believe the prosecutors would have dismissed the case um, as, as inquest, for inquest. Ang sasabihin ng, ng mga prosecutors, this is not right for inquest, wala wala invalid tong warrantless arrest kasi yan yung nangyayari by the way sa hindi natin na uh, uh, legal minded na mga uh, viewers yung inquest kung warrantless arrest ka dadalhin ka sa prosecutor for inquest the office of the inquest proceeding is for the prosecutor to see whether there was a valid or invalid arrest kung valid yung arrest magpo-proceed ka to court kung may kaso talaga kung invalid yung arrest, supposed to be, you will be released. That if there is still a case na may, 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 may kailangan ka talagang panagutan, mag-preliminary investigation. Bibigyan ka ng kopya ng, ng complaint and the attachments and the documents and you will be given 10 days to answer. So, yung sa nangyari kay, kay Mr. Musk, dinakip siya, inami naman niya on the way na siya yung nag-post So sinabi ng prosecutor na invalid yung uh, ang 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 warrantless arrest kasi matagal yan yung pinost bakit ngayon lang dinakip. And yet sinabi nila na kailangan dalhin pa rin sa korte kasi uh, may 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 crime pa rin na nagawa. No, I I think the proper way would have been they should have been he should have been released and given a copy of the complaint and given 10 days to respond to the complaint. Yun 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 sana yung dapat na na nangyayari. Basta sa mga viewers natin, if you could uh, bring anything out of this talk, out of this uh, uh, interview, ang, ang dapat niyong isipin pag dinakip kayo, just shut up. Huwag kayong magsabi ng kahit ano man sa police. Bigay mo lang pangalan mo at address and also then demand your right to speak to a lawyer, a competent and impartial lawyer speak to a religious minister, speak to your uh, nearest of kin, sa parents nyo, sa kapatid nyo, sa asawa nyo, but never speak about the crime because no matter how guilty you are, you still have rights that are protected under our constitution. And yung, yung pagsasabi mo sa police tungkol sa krimen, wala talagang maitutulong yan. Hindi ka tutulungan ng police na na ma mas ma malimitahan yung kaso gagamitin lang yan ng polis yung sinasabi mo para idiin ka pa yan lang po yan. may isa pa tayong question attorney pasensya na po puro legal kasi ang tanong mm, yes, no problem this is still related mm, yes, no to cyber libel 
counted pa rin ba siya mm. as continuing if the original post was already taken down but was posted by another user as a screenshot? No. Um, my interpretation to that is yung nag-post, yung, yung pangalawa, should have been the one na uh, should be held liable for libel. However, there is a Disney case na sinasabi doon na yung sharing of posts are, uh, it, it will not, sharing of a libelous post will not constitute libel itself. Yan yung decision sa cybercrime, yung, uh, yung, yung Disney case, the one which uh, went to the Supreme Court to question the legality of the anti-cybercrime law. Now, ang, eh, ang intent ng justices sa pagkabasa ko sa decision na yun is pag nag-post ako, for example, and it is libelous, sinir mo. Hindi ka nag-comment, nag, nag wala kang ibang kinoment, uh, sinir mo lang. And, okay, the, 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 the Supreme Court is correct saying na walang libel na as far as you're concerned, hindi ka nag-libel sa nilibel ko kasi nag-share ka lang sa libelous post ko. Yung sa situation na, na tinatanong mo, screenshot tapos pinost, I believe I could still argue na wala pa rin libel doon. Bakit? Kasi that is still sharing. Although again, ang, 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 ang stand ng Supreme Court doon sa Disney case is sinabi nila na uh, eno mo lang yun, yung uh, out of ano lang, naisip mo lang, i-share ka agad. Oh. So na-share mo ka agad. So uh, I would say uh, pwede rin yun yun gamitin ng uh, prosecutor na sasabihin na oh, it's it's uh, it's a new crime now because uh, you posted this um, as a screenshot. Pero as with it, it's continuing, my continuing crime, di, hindi na, hindi na. Nag-post ako ng libel, screenshot mo, tinake down ko yung, uh, yung, yung post ko kasi na, na ano ko na, libel pala to, ayoko ma, ma, masampa ng libel. Tapos pinos mo, hindi na yung continuing as far as I am concerned. But, it could or could be libel as far as you're concerned kasi pinos mo yung ano yung 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 uh, nagiging author ka nun. kasi uh, pinos mo yung post ko ang screenshot ng post ko yun lang po okay salamat po ulit po um question about uh on whether, on how also to handle cases where the post, the original poster is an unknown. So, and I think there's a legal answer to this, but Siguro also would like to hear the thoughts of Miss Len um, or CK. Kasi, Sige po. Itong pag-aresto kay Teacher Ronel Mas at saka yung iba pang mga netizens no for posting alleged threats against the president. Ang makikita po natin dito yung double standards. Kahit naman hindi tayo abogado, kitang-kita naman yung kawalan ng compassion dun sa ordinaryong mamamayan. Pero bakit ang presidente, mura ng mura, wala naman nagkakaso sa kanya. O, at... Eh, Din, tinawag niya pang stupid si Justice Carpio dahil lang dun sa opinion ni Justice Carpio regarding the West Philippine Sea. So, kaya makikita natin yung yung double standards dito eh. Uh, yung fake news provision na ginagamit nila ngayon to uh, against dun sa critics, no, sa mga netizens. Bakit yung peddlers ng fake news gaya ni Moka Uson at saka ng iba pang mga opisyales ng gobyerno, hindi naman nila kinakasuhan. Yung mga nagbibigay ng ng verbal threats at saka matitinding mga harassment kay Vice President Lenny Robredo, bakit hindi nila iniimbestigahan? So, ang nakikita talaga natin dito yung double standards. At ginagamit nila yung batas as a weapon against critics and netizens. At hindi talaga natin to dapat patun ano, payagang magpatuloy. Kaya mas kailangan lalong hindi tayo matakot. Alalahanin natin yung mga karapatan natin. Tama yung sinabi ni Attorney Isles, no? may karapatan tayo kahit na inaresto tayo. 
halawan natin ng aral yung nangyari kay Teacher Ronald Mas. Medyo nalulungkot ako talaga doon kasi uh, merong, meron din pagkakamali yung media. Eh. Nagpa-interview sa media si Teacher Ronel at yun ang ginamit to cure daw yung, yung problema doon sa warrant test arrest. At kitang-kita naman natin kung paano siya Tinanggalan siya ng dignidad eh, ng mga polis, di ba? Itang kita doon sa mga posts sa Twitter at sa social media kung paano siya pinagmakaawa, pinaiyak sa mga polis. Yung circumstances na yun, pinapakita kung gaano katagibang yung hustisya dito sa ating bansa. Kaya marami pa talaga tayong um, aayusin sa sistema ng hustisya natin. Kaya kailangan mas maging vigilant yung karaniwang mamamayan. No? Nandyan yung mga abogado, mga human rights lawyers, pero tayong mga ordinaryong mamamayan, kailangan, ano rin eh, palakasin din natin yung loob ng isa't isa no, na wag, wag tayong magpatali doon sa chilling effect na gustong, uh, gustong ipamayani ng administrasyon. Ito. Nawala ata si Jess. Siguro mag-jump na lang din ako dun sa sinabi ni, um, ni Miss Len. So tingnan natin kung ano yung bakit ito ginagawa and then ano yung pattern ng pag-target nila sa mga mamamayan kung, at ano yung magiging long-term effect nito. So nakikita na natin, no? so marami sa atin, even sa artist community, natatakot na to to voice out their opinions kasi nga sunod-sunod yung pag-aresto even hindi even mga low profile na teacher let's say so yan yung mga long term effect pero sabi nga ng ating mga ano artista na hindi ito yung panahon para matakot tayo ito yung panahon para mas mag-voice out tayo at siguro i-consider natin yan thank you kay attorney Isles no na alam natin kung ano yung rights natin once na maaresto without a warrant so ang kailangan siguro mas mas ito yung maging fire natin para mas magsalita tayo kasi kung patuloy lang yung pag-arrest na tapos tayong mga kapwa mamamayan ay walang sinasabi or walang um, insight about it mas lalo siyang magpapatuloy at magiging sunod-sunuran na lang lahat tayo so thank you po kay attorney sa free legal counsel on what to do when arrested so kailangan maging vigilant tayo na alam natin na when i post this ano ang consequence ano ang rights ko under this constitution uh, may question from the left ngayon from Joseph Arcego, no? Any opinion this talaga, especially during these times, still equal for all? May gusto pong sumagot? <laughs> Attorney? Uh, it has never been equal, even during the uh, times before this pandemic. Um, it has always been for those who are in power, those who are rich, those who, who have access to the powers that be. And maybe uh, that's part uh, and parcel of who we are as a people na gagawin natin lahat uh, to move to a society na pantay-pantay tayo at uh, yung bang sinasabi na kung nagkasala ka, mahirap man umayaman, of course I'm quoting a joke no here, um, you would answer for what you've done. What is happening right now is those uh, who have access to resources, who have um, access to lawyers, um, could really uh, bring justice there the way they, they want to, to bring it um, in, the, in their way. But uh, yung ano naman, yung namang mahihirap, yung the ma, ma, ano na, the, of course, they're assigned lawyers by the government, pero tingnan mo naman, ilang kaso yung hinahandol ng isang public attorney. So, hindi rin nabibigyan ng sapat na preparation for each case and uh, they're being forced to, uh, especially sa drugs, uh, they're being forced to just accept the play bargaining kahit na uh, wala naman talaga silang kasalanan. So, sa tanong na justice uh, ngayon, um, it has always been 
an a, a partial justice, a justice partial to the rich, to the powerful, and to those who have access to the rich and the powerful. And I think uh, every day we should wake up and uh, try our best to move forward to a society na uh, pantay pantay yung justicia para sa lahat. May gusto po kayong edag. Mayor? Yes. I think may isa pang tanong kanina from from the Facebook um, on whether kung pwede daw bang kasuhan ba ang mga police kung hali <laughs> uh, pet if it is that abuse that, uh, that abuses their authority. Uh, pag, pa, yung yung illegal illegal arrest yung nangyayari pag sinabi ng uh, prosecutor na invalid yung warrant arrest. So, the, the, the uh, aggrieved citizen should find ways in order to file cases against this uh, police personnel para naman uh, may, may ano sa kanila ba? May um, malalaman nila na mali yan and um, their kabaro, their uh, kasamahan in, in the force would know that that is not uh, allowed and uh, that is wrong and uh, they will change and magbago sila and uh, they should always stand with the people protecting the right of the people hindi lang yung uh, they serve each other they protect each other I think uh, in agreement na rin kay Attorney Isle so tayo tayo na rin siguro magtulungan like um, kung ano yung alam natin na basics on arrest or where to seek help as a community Tayo tayo na rin mag-assist sa isa't isa just in case it happens. And especially if we have colleagues or friends who are very vocal online, let's make sure that we inform them of their basic rights and na may mga hotlines or mga immediate assistance na may access tayo doon. Sige po, um, maganda rin yung nangyari halimbawa ang example dun sa pag-arrest kay Maria Victoria Beltran. No, nakita natin yung system of support. Mahalaga po yung ganong klase ng support sa ating mga kasamahan, journalist man o artist kung sila ay malagay sa ganong klaseng sitwasyon. At as a human rights um, journalist for a long time, maigi po talaga na magtabi ng resibo. Yung documentation po ng human rights abuses. So kung kayo po ay naka, ano, kinasuhan o naresto ng illegal, um, sa ngayon mahirap sabihin na magpa-file ng counter charges eh. Pero kailangan na merong maglakas ng loob para gawin ito. At yung lakas ng loob na yun, kukunin natin sa bawat isa. Um, hindi natin to maaasahan sa tagibang na justisya natin, kundi sa bawat isang mamamayan na naninindigan para sa katotohanan. Yung halimbawa po nangyari sa ABS-CBN, yung shutdown order, napakatindi ng chilling effect nito sa karaniwang mamamayan at maging sa mga journalist. Pero ang gusto nating ipakita, patuloy tayong naninindigan at nag-a-assert ng karapatan sa pamamahayag, karapatan sa malayang pagpapahayag dahil ito yung pag-asa na dapat nating panghawakan, lalo na ngayon sa panahon ng pandemya. Kaya po doon sa tanong kanina, dapat bang mag-file ng counter charges? Dapat po. Uh, kailangan lang siguro na meron tayong support system at marami namang mga human rights lawyers at sana marami pang mag-volunteer no? para dito sa ganitong klase ng pagtatanggol sa ating karapatang pantao. Salamat po. Um, I think maganda rin po yung pinoint out Ms. Len on support system and also uh, because napag-usapan kanina on access to justice and whether justice is equal for everyone. Pero kasi ba ang justice naman hindi lang naman siya sa korte na kukuha. 
uh, as this can come in different forms as well. And I think it's a good chance now to um, ask our guests about sa mga nakikita nyo, ano ba yung mga forms of resistance right now na nakikita natin na kasi kung mahirap mang makuha ang hostesya in legal, through legal means, ano, saan pa ba tayo pwede makakuha and ano pa yung ibang forms um, of justice and also of resistance na nakikita natin sa ngayon. Maybe Kay? Yes, um, now more than ever, we efforts natin on creative ways to resist. So, nandiyan yung mga initiatives ng um, share, yung community pulling in resources together to provide for other people, for the marginalized, etc. So, maraming mga initiatives like information drives, um, mga campaigns geared towards um, helping each other. So, now more than ever, ito na yung pinaka-importante time to use what you have and coordinate with um, people who share the same goal or advocacy because it's a very difficult time for all of us and even if we can't we can't rely on the government alone they have responsibilities yes but as um, citizens and um, as observers in this pandemic tayo tayo na lang din yung magtulungan and Although aminin na natin na selective naman talaga ang justice natin, I think dito papasok yung role ng media na hindi dapat nating kinukurtail yung freedom nila to na, ma- na maghayag ng mga unfair treatments, ng mga balita na magbibigay ng boses sa ating lahat na mas makakapag-amplify ng mga efforts at mas makakapag- um, bigay ng unfair ay ng unfair ng fair na reportage para sa ating lahat. So now is the time to channel our light in this um, darkness and we are one with um, the media, the artists, the activists in fighting this um, oppression, this um, unfair and selective warrantless arrests and i hope na lahat po tayo mas maging vigilant lahat tayo mas maging um, aware we should know our basic rights and we should not be afraid this is not the time to be afraid salamat kay uh, miss len sige yung isang sige, court na isang pwede nating ipanalo yung court of, court of public opinion. Nakikita natin na takot na takot yung mga nakaupo kasi ang dami ng kapalpakan na kanilang ginagawa. Pero dahil sa pagiging vigilant ng mamamayan, ay hindi pa tayo lugmok na lugmok. Kaya kung sa mga kapwa ko journalist at kahit sa mga artist at ng mamamayan, yung truth telling ay kailangan magpatuloy, especially in the midst of paid trolls at saka lies and disinformation na pinapalagan ng ng mga nakaupo no alam naman natin yung objective nito eh ang objective nito para takutin tayo para mamayani yung takot sa mamamayan at maipagpatuloy nila yung kanilang mga patakaran sadly ay hindi naman tumutugon sa pangangailangan ng mamamayan so ngayon uh, it is our civic duty to demand from government what it should be doing to fight COVID-19. Hindi tayo yung kalaban, hindi mamamayan yung kalaban, hindi media ang kalaban. Ang kalaban nga natin yung pandemic na ito. Gaya nung sinabi nyo, pero yung mga artista namumulat na ngayon. No? Kahit yung mga dating supporters ni Duterte, dahil dun sa kapalpakan, dun sa response ng gobyerno sa COVID-19, hindi mo talaga mapitigilan na mag-express ng frustration ang mamamayan. At dapat, uh, spread courage, not fear. Gaya ng sinabi ni Kay, hindi ito ang panahon ng takot. Kailangan mas maging matapang tayo kasi we deserve more. We do not deserve itong ginagawa ngayon sa ating walang mass testing. Um, nag-move na sa modified ECQ pero wala pa rin scientific approach na ginagawa ang gobyerno para labanan ng pandemic na ito. Salamat po, Ms. Lynn. Attorney? In, uh, um, 
hindi na kami mag mag magpapahalan kaso attorney kasi wala kaming access to a lawyer, wala kaming access to uh, the legal system. But the real court na uh, dapat nating pala, pa, uh, panalunin is uh, not even the, the not the, the the court the judicial courts not even the the court of uh, public opinion but yung uh, court yung puso ng bawat Pilipino na sana yung mga ordinaryong tao mawala mawala na yung takot to speak the truth and speak truth to power sabihin nila kung ano nilang anong nakikita nila sa kapaligiran nila at di demand what is truly theirs as mandated by the constitution these officials that we have these are supposed to be our representatives they are just uh, given our mandate in order to manage our people to manage our government but they are not our rulers they are not above us and they are supposed to be answerable to us but when the law is being used to silence us to to make us fear to make those who are in the uh, list of us afraid to speak for what is truly theirs natatalo tayo so dapat dapat at um, we have to fight this among ourselves yung sinasabi nila na uh, mag magkunin natin yung lakas natin sa bawat isa uh, we reflect upon the struggles of our comrades of yung mga kasamahan natin kung anong ginagawa nila kung magawa natin yan sa ating sariling community in our own little ways abogado man tayo journalist um, nasa NGO work may magagawa tayo to move forward this country to a better country na yung dapat na kanya sa Pilipino na ibigay talaga sa kanya magandang hapon po Ayan. Salamat po sa lahat ng speakers. I think it's also great that we're ending on a medyo hopeful note. Medyo. <laughs> Kasi, doon na pag-usapan na maraming restriction, maraming sa so, na, meron at meron pa rin magagawa. Um, siguro as we close the discussion, we'll give each of you the opportunity also to um tell our viewers when, where they can queue or your organization kung may gusto po sila anong or kung gusto lang nilang um, just know more about what your organizations are doing saan po nila pwede kayong ma mahanap you can start with K right um dakila po is on Facebook Instagram and Twitter um pwede search nyo lang po and makikita nyo po and meron po kaming ongoing post petition on Channel Our Light, which is a solidarity um, initiative for the arts, media, and creative community um, para ma-uphold natin at ma-defend ang press freedom and freedom of expression. So if you have increase or any question that you like to um, ask Dakila, you can email us at mabuhay at dakila.org.th or reach out to us sa aming social media accounts. Maraming maraming salamat po. It's time to be um, to not be fearful, it's time to spread the light. Thank you. Ms. Len? Yes, uh, Bulat Lab is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we also have a talk show, online talk show like this. It's called Bulat Latan. So it's available on Spotify. Uh, pwede nyo rin po pakinggan yung mga previous episodes namin regarding relevant issues of the day. And we thank FMA for this invitation and let us continue to tell the truth and um, soldier on. Uh, for those who are based in Cebu, you can be a member of the Cebu Action Group. Um, um, search nyo lang po kami sa Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook group and um, maybe you can join one of our physical activities after the uh, GCQ. And uh, thank you po sa, sa FMA for this opportunity. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Salamat po. Salamat po sa speakers natin for the very fruitful and insightful discussion. Um, thank you also to our viewers. 
um, na nanood, sa mga nag-comment at nagtanong sa uh, marami din tayo natutupon. And like I said, we're, um, FMA is also planning to do more kinds of discussion. So, if you want to notify, like nyo lang po, page natin, so you can know where the next one will be. Salamat po ulit and good afternoon. Mm-hmm.